Good day, beloved, and welcome to this third part of our mini-series on the beauty of Pentecost. Now, what I would like us to do is let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. Yesterday we looked at verse 18. Today we're going to look a little further. But let's just read it. Before we do that, though, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that reveals to us what the truth is that we need to know. And we pray, Father, in Jesus' precious name, that you will open up our hearts and our minds to understand and receive your word. And then to take it and apply it to our lives. Father, we pray in Jesus' precious name. So be with me as your servant, as I, I teach your people. And uh, Father, may your name be glorified in everything that we do and everything we hear in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21, it says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now, we started this mini-series on, on the beauty of Pentecost by looking at the dwellings of God. All right? And with the beauty of Pentecost actually being the fact that God the Holy Spirit came to indwell believers. He came to live within you and I. Now yesterday, we looked at the evidence that, that someone is actually indeed indwelled by the Holy Spirit if there's certain evidences. We looked at the evidence. We looked at verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 5. What we're going to do today is we're going to continue looking at the evidence. The evidence that will be visible in someone's life that they are actually truly indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Now Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 tells us that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will be visible in our worship of our Savior. Let's look at verse 19 again. Verse 19 says, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You see, this verse tells us something about the kind of worshipers we will be when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And, and the first thing we see is that we will be a celebrating people. What does it mean? What does it mean to be a celebrating people? Well, look at the words singing. And making melody in your heart to the Lord. You see, we are supposed to be so over overwhelmed by everything that the Lord has done for us. That our hearts will be filled with a song of praise to Him. Now the word melody means to plug or to strum or to vibrate. The image here is basically someone sitting and playing the harp. Now when you play a harp... There is a kind of oneness. That's the only way I can explain it. I tried to think about it. But there's a kind of oneness that takes place between the player, the musician, and his or her instrument. There is a kind of harmony that takes, that takes place between the two of them. Now, when we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, I believe there will be a kind of harmony, a kind of oneness, a, a kind of close communion with Him. Now, when you listen to a musician play an instrument, I, I, I've noticed that it's always the musician that seems to be one with his or her instrument that sounds the best, that, that actually gives you goose pimples. It's normally music which is made by a musician and his or her instrument that is in harmony with each other that deeply touches us. And beloved, when the Holy Spirit indwells us, he brings us in harmony with Himself. Let me just say something about us Baptists. We are so afraid of the Holy Spirit that because we think that the Holy Spirit is going to cause us to do all kinds of strange stuff. Strange things. Make us speak in tongues, fall over, do all kinds of strange things. And that's not the Holy Spirit that the Bible reveals to us. That is a, a Spirit that is Contrary to the Holy Spirit that is revealed in the Bible, who is a person. You see, 
When the Holy Spirit indwells us, it is the third person of the Trinity that indwells us. And it's the Holy Spirit that brings us into harmony with Himself. He fills our hearts with love for God. And like a master musician, He plugs the strings of our hearts to bring us or bring forth the most beautiful music. I read, read someone say that the Lord will pluck the strings of our hearts and will produce a symphony of praise to the glory of God. <laughs> Yo, so beautiful. You see, there are times in, in the life of a spirit-filled believer, of somebody that's indwelt by the Holy Spirit, when he or she will just walk around with a song of praise or a song of worship to the Lord. Sometimes it's just a song of praise in the heart. Sometimes we will just hum the tune. Sometimes we will sing aloud. I, I remember times when I would take my guitar and just spontaneously start singing. It's not a song that I know. There's just this harmony and, and, and the song just comes and I just sing a song of praise or worship to the Lord. Have you ever, ever experienced walking around with a song of praise in your heart? I mean, it could be a phrase of a song. It could be a few words. It could be a whole song. You could be humming it, singing it. It, it could just be the words in your mind. The thing is, have you experienced praise just bubbling up from within you? And so much so that you cannot stop it. You just want to sing God's praises. If that has happened to you, that's the Holy Spirit in you. Have you ever experienced spontaneously just making up a song of praise to the Lord? You know, for everything that He's done for you, it's just, it's just words that you make up. But it's all praise to God for what He has done in Christ. I mean, it doesn't have to be the best song in the world. It is a spontaneous song of praise or worship to our Lord. You see, beloved, that's what Paul is make, or talking about here. When we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit and we are living in a Spirit-filled life, He will produce worship to our Savior. Remember when Paul and Silas were put in prison? In the dungeon, the deepest part of the prison? What were they doing? They were singing praises to the Lord and they were praying. Where did that come from? I believe with my whole heart it came from the Holy Spirit within them. You see, it doesn't matter if you can sing or if you can sing, I'm going to say, if you sing on tune or if you, if you have the best voice, that's not what it's about. There will be a song in your heart for your Savior that comes from the Holy Spirit that indwells you. The origin of the song is the Holy Spirit. When was the last time you spontaneously just sang praises to your Lord and Savior? Can you remember? Because if, if you haven't had a song or a, 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 words of a song or just praise in your heart towards the Savior for some time, chances are you're not living a spirit-filled life. It could be that you're not spiritful. If you had it before and it's gone, maybe you should check your own life and, and allow the Holy Spirit to examine your life and show you whether you are living in sin. You see, this praise, this worship that comes from within, that is evidence of someone who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit and who lives a spiritful life. All right, so you see... Someone who is filled with the Holy Spirit or indwelled by the Holy Spirit will be a celebrating person. People filled with the Holy Spirit, indwelled by the Holy Spirit, will be a celebrating people. Now look at verse 20 of Ephesians 5. It says, Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what we see in this verse as we see people who are indwelled by the Holy Spirit will be people who are content. You see, they will be people who have the ability to give thanks to God for all things. 
all things. Listen to this verse again. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. And, and Paul is speaking to the Ephesians and he just spoke to them. That's God, God's will is for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you can say, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Or you can just say it in your heart of hearts. Why in the world would I give thanks to God for all things? I mean, why would I give thanks to God for my cancer in my case? Why would I give thanks to God for losing my job if you lost your job? Why would you give thanks to God for having a child with a disability? Why would you give thanks to God for maybe you have your own disability? Why would you give thanks to God? I mean, it just doesn't make sense that anyone in their right mind would give thanks for all the bad things which happens in our lives. But this is exactly where we see the difference between a person who is indwelled by the Holy Spirit and a person who's not. You see, the believer who is indwelled by the Holy Spirit will be content in all things because he or she knows who it is in them who is in ultimate control, working out his purpose and his plan in their lives. They will understand that God, the indwelling Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, is in charge. And he's working out his purposes and his plans in my life. You see, beloved, not only does the Holy Spirit enable us to worship him, you know, with songs of praise and worship, the Spirit enables us to worship God the Father by trusting him. That's also a form of worship. You see, God, the Holy Spirit, dwells in the believer and he will bring the believer to the place where he or she will, will learn to trust the Lord for all things, in everything. And the thing is, the longer we walk in step with the Holy Spirit, you know, like I said yesterday, that child that was walking in step with his parent, the longer we walk in step with the Holy Spirit, the more we will learn to trust in him. The more we will, and, and, and the more we trust in Him, the more we will be able to thank Him in all circumstances. You see, beloved, as we grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the indwelling Holy Spirit, we, we come to a better understanding of who He is, and we understand that He is on our side. He's not against me that he, because He's allowing all these bad things to happen to me. No! He is the one who is in charge. He knows what he's doing. I can trust him completely. I can be content in whatever circumstance I might find myself in. I mean, it's as if Romans chapter 8 verse 31 becomes real. If we understand that the Holy Spirit is on our side. That the Holy Spirit is the one working out his purposes and his plans in our lives. It is God, the third person of the Trinity. God the Spirit. We read in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, What then shall we say uh, to all, or uh, to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You see, beloved, when this truth becomes a reality in our hearts, we will be able to say with David in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. He is the one that looks after me. I can trust Him completely. You see, it's the indwelling Holy Spirit that enables us to, to know for certain that God will look after us. That everything He does, whatever, whether, whether we like it or not, is for our good and for His ultimate glory. We read in Romans 8 verse 28, it says, <laughs> And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Beloved, there's nothing that can happen to us which is beyond God's control. Even your current situation, whatever it might be, whatever you find yourself in, God is firmly in control of every single thing that is happening in your life. It might not feel like it. It might not seem like it. But let me tell you, it's what Paul is trying to say. Not trying. He's not trying. He is saying it. Paul is saying that your life is under God's control. You see, what the Holy Spirit does in us, 
is he works contentment in us so that we can rest in him, trust in him, rely on him, so that we can be rest assured that he is in full control. I mean, Paul experienced it. We read in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13, he says, and this is what Paul says, not that I speak in regards to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Ah, Paul learned to be content. Verse 12, he says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. I know how to have little, that's basically, and I know how to have abundance. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Oh, and then he says these words. Oh, it's amazing. Verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And where does the strength, that strength come from? It comes from the third person of the Trinity, God the Holy Spirit that indwells us. The person of the Holy Spirit. Remember, he's not a power. He's not some force. He is a person. And it's God the Holy Spirit. God in us. He's the one at the end of the... Christ in us uh, through his Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that enables us to do all things through Him who strengthens us. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8, uh, 6 to 8, we read, Now goodness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. So, if God provides food for me and he provides clothing for me and some uh, water to drink, I can be content. And this is what Paul said to Timothy. Timothy, with these things we shall be content. You see, Paul learned to trust the Lord in all things. And it's because of the Holy Spirit. He learned to be content because he knows that God knows what he is doing. The Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. We will also learn how to be content in all things and be able to, to give thanks for all things as the indwelling Holy Spirit teaches us to trust Him in all things, as the Holy Spirit teaches us to be content in all things. You see, it's the Holy Spirit who teaches us this valuable lesson that God is in control of even the smallest details of our lives. And as we journey on this path as a believer, <laughs> wow, I believe that we will develop an attitude of gratitude. And that even for the things that we do not understand. Even for the things that we might think are bad. And all of it is possible because the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, works it in us. See, beloved, when we see someone thanking God and praising Him, singing praises to Him, as they go through the one deep valley of life after the other, we know it can't be because of that person's own ability. It's not this, one, this, this person that makes it possible for them to go through the valleys of life, singing praises to Him, trusting Him, thanking Him in all things. It's not out of His own. It is not the person's doing. It's the work of the Spirit of God. You see, beloved, our selfish, self-centered, critical spirits cannot produce contentment during troubled times. It just can't. In fact, our flesh cannot thank God for all things at all times, especially for the bad things. Our flesh doesn't even thank God for the good that we have at times. It is the Holy Spirit in us who produces a heart of contentment and a heart of thanksgiving, and a heart of worship and praise amid, of, amid our troubles. Someone said, when the Holy Spirit fills a life, there is no room for anything else. Anything else but praise, gratefulness, thankfulness, praise and worship to the King of Kings who is in charge of our lives. See, when the Holy Spirit indwells the believer, 
I believe it will become evident that there is a there is a growing contentment and a thanksgiving in all things. There will be true worship, true praise, not just on a Sunday, but spontaneously at times in a person's life. All right now, look at verse 21 of Ephesians chapter 5. And here we see more evidence of a believer. Um, that is indwelled by the Holy Spirit. In verse 21, we see that it will be evident that someone is indwelled by the Holy Spirit in the way that he or she interacts with God's people. Verse 21 says, Submitting to one another in the fear of God. In fact, we read in verse 19, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Beloved, when someone is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, it will have a definite impact on the way that that person interacts with other believers. And in fact, all believers who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit will, will be impacted by the indwelling Holy Spirit in their lives. But I've noticed through the years that it's much easier to deal with the Spirit of God than... With uh, and, and let's say with his sovereign will in our lives than dealing with the people of God. <laughs> yeah. Have you experienced it? Much easier to, uh, to deal with the Holy Spirit and the work that the Holy Spirit and even the tough things that happens in our lives than to deal with God's people. Someone wrote the following poem, a short poem, that says it so beautifully. It says, To live above with saints we love Oh, won't that be glory? But to live below with saints we know. Now, that's another story. You see, <laughs> if there is one thing that is clear to everyone is the fact that the people of God are tough. The people who profess to know Jesus Christ of, as Lord and Savior, they struggle to live in harmony with one another. You see, believers have a, have a difficult time getting together with one another. But the thing is, beloved, when the Holy Spirit is in control of our lives, He produces peace and harmony that blows our minds. There's just this harmony that He, he creates because we are indwelt by the whole one Spirit. All of us, all of God's people. And because all of God's people are indwelt by the one Spirit, the God, the Holy Spirit, there is just harmony. There's peace. It's when we do things in accordance to our own sinful nature. I believe that is when things quickly go sideways. That's when we really run into trouble very quickly. But if we walk in step with the Holy Spirit, I believe that we will see it in the church among God's people. And there will be different things that we will see among God's people. Now what we're going to do is, God willing, tomorrow I would like us to, if, if the, it be the Lord's will, to look at the church, at, look at believers that walks in step with the Holy Spirit. And, and what we will see in their lives, what, what will we see in the church among God's people if God's people walk in step with the Holy Spirit. Because I believe it's, it's very, very important for us to understand, uh, to, to know. Because it will help us, not just in our church life, but also in our personal lives. What do I look like when I have fellowship with God's people? What, do, do I really reflect the indwelling Holy Spirit in my life as I walk with God's people? All right, so we've seen that um, we, God's people will be a celebrating people, nah? a celebrating people, singing, making melody in our hearts to the Lord, if we are indwelled by the Holy Spirit. We will be a people who praises the Lord. But we also see those who are indwelled by the Holy Spirit, they will be content with their situation. They will be content with where they are because it's the Holy Spirit who works it in them. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to, to work contentment in us. All right, it's important. And then the last thing that we looked at, and we shortly looked at it, is that we will see that there will be this difference 
in the way that God's people interact with one another. We will see it. When somebody is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, the way that he or she interacts with God's people will be amazing. Verse 21, they will submit to one another in the fear of God and they will speak into one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. God willing, next time, next, uh, not next time, tomorrow, God willing, we will look at that. So let's have a word of prayer as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that there will be evidence when we are truly indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And Father, I pray for anyone listening right now who might be wondering, but wow, I don't have this in my life. I don't see it in my life. I pray, Father, may this be the day we either by faith run to Christ and be saved and the Holy Spirit comes and indwells them or may this be the day when there is an awakening uh, a revival and that we will cry out to you and cry out and ask Father if we have grieved the Spirit by, by any means by our conduct by our sin by things in our lives that is not pleasing to Him may this be the day Lord Oh, I pray, please, Father, so that it may be visible in the world that we are truly indwelled by the third person of the Trinity, God the Holy Spirit. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your time. I hope it's been a blessing to you as it's been a blessing to me to prepare. And may the Lord really the, the word that goes out may it not return void. That which he has sent out to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. So God willing until tomorrow. Bye-bye.